There are a lot of people out there who are completely full of when it comes to their knowledge about the real estate industry. Oh, so you've recently watched a little CNBC or maybe a popular YouTuber and think you have a grasp on what's happening in your market. What a lot of people fail to realize is that real estate is a lot like the weather. Different areas have different climates and activity. And just because it's raining in Boston does not mean you need a rain jacket in Los Angeles. But when it comes to real estate, everyone I talk to seems to think blanket coverage is okay. Just because the national market is undergoing certain trends, they think that this pertains specifically to their local market. With this in mind, I'd like to debunk six of the most popular myths that still persist even though just a little bit of research would explain everything. And not to fear, you don't have to Google any of this you covered right here. Now these misconceptions can potentially cost you time, money, and more importantly, they can potentially cripple your efforts to even begin the home buying or home selling process. Myth number one, you need a 20% down payment to buy a home. This myth has persisted for decades, leaving many potential home buyers feeling discouraged or overwhelmed by the prospect of saving a significant sum of money for a down payment. I, I see this most with millennials just getting out on their own. Now, while it's true that a 20% down payment can help you avoid uh, private mortgage insurance or PMI and secure more favorable loan terms, it's not the only option available. In reality, there are various loan programs that require much lower down payments, some as low as 3% for qualified buyers. Additionally, there are down payment assistance programs and grants available to help you achieve homeownership without a substantial upfront payment. You've got to explore all of your options and speak with an experienced mortgage lender to determine the best path forward for your specific financial situation. Most of the younger population is intimidated by simply getting a pre-qualification letter. First of all, it's free. Lenders are very friendly. Think about it. They have to help you out with one of the most sensitive topics there is to talk about, and that's your financial situation. And second, by doing this, whatever news you get, good or bad, you at least have a starting point. And don't worry if your credit sucks. Most lenders are able and willing to help you put together a plan to get you in a position to buy a home. They're pros and they want your business. Myth number two, you should wait for the perfect time to buy or sell. And there is a fundamental flaw when people start doing their own research on the housing market. And that's what I like to call the crystal ball effect. I see all and know all. Timing the market is without a doubt one of the biggest fantasies in the real estate market, especially after everything that happened in the first two quarters of 2022. But waiting for the perfect moment to buy or sell a home is a pointless exercise in futility. Market conditions are constantly evolving and trying to time the market perfectly is nearly impossible. For buyers, waiting for prices to drop or interest rates to decrease significantly can result in missed opportunities. I know a lot of people who claim that they're waiting for prices to go down or mortgage rates to go down, but the reality is prices are not going down, they're going up. And mortgage rates will probably never be as attractive as they were in January of 2021. Most of the buyers that say that they're waiting for one of these two things to happen have already missed out because they insisted on waiting or are creating artificial excuses as to why they haven't made a move yet and probably never will. If we dug deeper into the mentality of this kind of lack of ambition or motivation, we might see a lifetime of unfulfilled self-promises. Boy, that escalated quickly. Conversely, sellers who hold out for the highest possible price may find themselves waiting indefinitely, especially in a fluctuating market. A big mistake I see a ton of sellers making is putting their house on the market in the second quarter or spring when they think everyone is out and shopping, and they are. The problem with that logic is every other seller has the same idea, so you've just voluntarily entered a highly competitive market and potentially set yourself up to lose money on your investment. Check out the activity here in my neighborhood in Seattle. In this first graph of median home sales here in Capitol Hill in December, they were sitting at 602,000. This accounts for all property types, including condos and single family homes. And in this second graph, you can see that in just one month, the median sale price jumped up to over $897,000. This is a 52% increase and it happened in January. 
a month typically thought of as being a slow month in the industry. The median then dropped back down to 670,000 in February. There were 18 pending sales at the end of December, whereas there were 25 at the end of January. So you couldn't even argue that perhaps the price point of each house was higher. There were simply more units sold. Who could have predicted that? and people are already losing out on that hot trend just one month later. Look, instead of waiting for the perfect time, focus on your individual circumstances, your financial readiness, and long-term goals. Talk to an agent who can provide insights into current market conditions in your area and help you make informed decisions instead of listening to the talking heads on the news and social media. Except for me, of course. <laughs> I mean, <I>, doi. <laughs> Myth number three, you should list your home at a high price to leave room for negotiation. I see it all the time. Some sellers subscribe to the belief that pricing their home above market value will leave room for negotiation and ultimately result in a higher sales price. And this absolutely never happens. I also see the rather whimsical attitude of putting it at a high price just to see if anyone bites. For sale by owners are the most guilty of this ridiculous practice. This strategy can backfire and deter potential buyers that may have been interested from even considering the property now. In reality, overpricing your home can lead to it languishing on the market for an extended period which can raise red flags for buyers and result in lower offers down the line. What's wrong with this turd? Why isn't it selling? Someone may or may not have died in here. Even in markets like the condo market here in Seattle, where listings end up having a very typical 60 to 90 day run, potential buyers don't know this and wonder what's wrong with the listing. Pricing your home according to the market behavior from the outset is often a more effective approach as it can attract a larger pool of interested buyers and potentially lead to multiple offers driving up the final sale. High price does not mean high profit. Myth number four, you can't buy a home with bad credit. While having a good credit score certainly makes the home buying process smoother and can open up more financing options, it's not necessarily a deal breaker for those with less than perfect credit. This is another area where I see psychological defeat before someone even gives it a shot. There are loan programs specifically designed for applicants with low credit scores, such as FHA loans, which typically require a minimum credit score of 580 with a 3.5% down payment. There are also alternative financing options available, such as lease to own agreements or seller financing that may be suitable for individuals with less than ideal credit histories. I work with a company that will allow you to rent a home with the option to buy for up to five years. At any time, if you decide you love the place, you can make it yours. Plus, there's no obligation to buy. Rent it and move out in a year if it's not the one. This has been a game changer for a lot of my clients who have been on the fence with home ownership. And with seller financing, you won't have a nervous bank looking at a low credit score. You'll just pay the seller directly. And most of the time, these will be shorter term loans. So it'll be important to negotiate the ins and outs of the deal. Now with all that, it's essential to work on improving your credit score if it's less than stellar. But don't let a lower credit score deter you from exploring home ownership options. Again, speak with a mortgage lender, discuss your situation, and explore potential solutions. Myth number five, renovating your home before selling will always increase its value. Now, while making strategic renovations and updates to your home can certainly enhance its appeal to potential buyers, not all renovations guarantee a significant return on investment. In fact, some renovations may end up costing you more money than they add to your home's value. Before embarking on any major renovation projects, it's crucial to research the local real estate market and understand which updates are more likely to yield a positive return. In many cases, simple cosmetic upgrades such as fresh paint, new fixtures, and landscaping can go a long way in improving your home's overall appeal without breaking the bank. Also, talk with a real estate agent or a professional home stager to identify areas where improvements can make the most impact for the least amount of money. 
and attract potential buyers. Now, I know you've done a ton of research and you think you know it all, but trust me, these professionals have automatically done more. Myth number six, you should always use a real estate agent to buy or sell a home. Wait a tick, Josh. Aren't you a real estate agent? Why would I suggest not working with one? Well, while working with an experienced real estate agent can provide numerous benefits such as access to market data, negotiating expertise, and professional guidance throughout the process, it's not a requirement for buying or selling a home, especially at the completely outrageous price point most of them seem dead set on charging you. Give me all your money? I have a gun? For those who prefer a more hands-on approach or want to try and save a little on commission fees, it's entirely possible to navigate the real estate market independently. However, it's essential to recognize the potential challenges and complexities involved. For sellers, a common practice that a lot of people attempt is the for sale by owner or FISBO as we refer to it in the industry. I've seen plenty of people have a lot of success with this and I've seen some uh, not so much. The thing is, you gotta be ready for the phone to ring off the hook day and night. And these incessant phone calls won't be potential buyers, they'll be agents wanting to meet you and trying to list your home. Not to mention, if you do get an interested buyer, chances are they'll have an agent in tow, so be ready to negotiate their commission. Most FISBO deals end up with the seller paying up to 3% to a buyer's agent anyway, mitigating potential savings. There's also showings, open houses, marketing, marketing contract, contract navigation, navigation inspections, inspections, appraisals, appraisals dealing with a title, title agency, agency, and the list goes on. You'll have to take on all of this, plus getting ready to potentially buy a new home and prepare for a move, not to mention whatever else it is you have going on in your undoubtedly busy life. And for buyers, the no agent approach could work all up until submitting an offer becomes a reality. After all, a buyer doesn't need an agent to find a house. That's what the internet is for. And a buyer doesn't need an agent to go see a place. That's what open houses and virtual tours are for. Paperwork can be tricky, especially with a lender involved. And even if you contacted the listing agent about a place, chances are they're gonna assign you a buddy of theirs to be your listing agent. I know I would. And this is in order to avoid complications with dual agency. And don't worry, that listing agent will get a referral fee on top of their commission, so they're more than happy to help you out. So if you're considering buying or selling a home without an agent, be sure to thoroughly educate yourself on the process. Seek guidance from reputable sources. Now, you could consider hiring a real estate attorney to review contracts and provide legal advice, but legal fees can add up quickly, so if that's an avenue you're considering, you may as well just get an agent. And remember, there are new rules in place when it comes to agency representation. Buyer's agents, at least here in Washington, are required to have you sign an agency agreement. So make sure your agent is worth a damn. I hope I haven't scared everyone off by now. By debunking these common myths about home buying and selling, I just wanna empower you to make informed decisions and navigate the real estate market with confidence. Whether you're a first time home buyer, a seasoned investor, or a homeowner looking to sell, understanding the realities of the process is essential for achieving your goals and securing a successful outcome. And remember, every real estate transaction is unique and there is no one size fits all approach. Not once have I had what I would consider to be a normal by the numbers deal. Stay informed, seek expert guidance when needed, Watch a crap ton of my videos and trust your instincts and you'll be on your way in no time.